hello and welcome to a trailer reaction video uh, so usually I'm not the biggest fan of trailers I tend to prefer to go into something blind and without background knowledge as much as possible but I know I'm not gonna be able to avoid spoilers for this so I figured let's just watch it and then see the trailer shall we um, so I am a very big Doctor Who fan, and I have been for a while, but this will actually be the first season that I'm watching live, despite having been watching the show for like 10 years. <laughs> it's, it's been a bit of a, bit of a ride with Doctor Who, but I have seen, I'm pretty sure I'm like 15 episodes away from having watched or read the scripts or seen reconstructions of every single episode and those 15 episodes are from Jodie Whittaker's run because I'm struggling a little bit with it just due to the writing I might go more into that in um, when I actually start reacting to season one apparently <laughs> um, just like my journey with how I started watching Doctor Who because I'm a bit sick at the moment and I don't want to spend too long on this and I am actually really genuinely excited to watch this trailer because I watched the 60th specials and the Christmas special and I'm really excited for Chuty's Doctor because he's just got that spark you know he's he's got a lot of energy and I immediately was like yeah that's the doctor whereas it took me about a season to get to that point with Jodie Whittaker um, and even then I'm still sometimes like this does not feel like Doctor Who um, but th I'm not here to uh, talk about what I don't like about her run because there are some things I do like um, but yes I have seen pretty much all of classic. I'm rewatching a lot of classic at the moment. Um, currently in the third Doctor's era with my rewatch. Uh, as you can see, I have a scarf, which is still a work in progress. So we're hopefully I'll get this done by the time the actual show comes out. Anyway, I'm going to start watching this trailer. Let's have a look and see what it is, shall we? I love the uh, unit Avengers Tower. It's great. I'm glad we get to see unit. Give me the love also, I love Ruby. Um, she is a companion I fell in love with so fast. And I'm all on my own. I'd it's such a huge stare. Who are you? I'm the Doctor. That was the space there. It's a time and space machine. Is it safe? No idea. No idea, Doctor. You know full well. It's probably not safe. Oh, they're finally like going back to dinosaurs? Well, that's not gonna happen, oh, no. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, Silurians? With all my adventures, never seen anything like that. To be turning more and more supernatural. Yeah. Is that a monster? No, don't be silly. There's no such thing as monsters. It's just creatures you haven't met yet. Okay. You'll keep us That's safe. Good. I will keep us safe. Oh no. I promise. Promises. Yeah. Take me all this time. Doctor, I don't think you can promise this. It's a real hype. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. <clears throat> Sound may change me. Ooh, she's looking a bit like it. Kate! And what's that Mel as well? Yay! Uh, yeah, I think that was Mel. So there's definitely a trend of um, being able to change time, which is not really something that Doctor Who has touched on hugely because it's always like you can't change time, you know. Um, I guess because because like Time Lord Victorious was kind of touching on the like. Um, I can change time, I'm, yeah, you know? So it looks like they're twisting the rules a little bit. Not that the rules are ever consistent. And saying, 
now we can change time. Which, look, I have been fixating on this ever since the 60th specials came out, but the Mavity thing is going to be important, okay? Because they went back and they met Isaac Newton and gravity got turned into Mavity and it keeps coming up again. And if that isn't important, then I'm going to be mad. <laughs> But given this trailer, it looks like there's going to be a trend of changing the past and that changing the future. Because um, we saw Ruby step on the butterfly and then suddenly she's more uh, lizard-like. Or more reptilian. Um, which kind of looks to me like she changes something in Jurassic or whatever period that was. Um, and the Silurians stay on Earth or something like that. So she, you know, instead of the, the humans evolving, um, yeah, so that'll be an interesting trend. What else do we see? We saw Kate, we saw Unit, which I'm glad I like Unit a lot. I've been, like I said, I've been watching the Third Doctor era now, and it's one of my favorites because I love Unit, uh. And it took me a little bit to warm up to Kate because I watched Classic Who before I met Kate. <clears throat> so it took me a little bit to see her as a legacy character and not just a replacement for the Brig. But now I'm like, yes, I love her and she's a lot of fun. Um, what else have we got? Let's see. So f as for times and stuff, there seems to be a Jurassic dinosaurs land there's that uh victorian era i don't know my historical eras but the the bridgerton era that uh ruby mentioned there's also these uh ooh, look at that in a sec um the musical instruments kind of note thing that looks fun and then there's like a post-apocalyptic kind of thing there's a lot going on and then at the end, we see Kate. What's this here? That, yeah, this. I don't know what to expect, but it, there's definitely a trend of changing the past. That looks fifties, sixties. I'm hoping. I'm always hoping to see past companions come back. Um, we've got Mel, which is cool. But Mel is like my least favorite companion because I did not vibe with her when I was watching classic Doctor Who. Um, and I was so glad when she left. And when she left, it meant Ace came in. So Ace is like a million times better than Mel, just in general. But seeing Mel back in the Christmas, no, she was in the 60th special, was really cool because... Like, I feel like in, the, in her 10 minutes of screen time in the 60th special, they made her a way more interesting character than her entire run in the 80s. <laughs> she didn't scream, which was like, wow, is this even the same character? <clears throat> um, anyway, we've got the TARDIS here looking a little bit neglected, and it makes me think of David Tennant's comment in Wild Blue Yonder about the TARDIS being abandoned and having civilizations rise around her. But see, that's the thing, because there seems to be a theme of being able to change time, like, is my brain just went dead, sorry. <laughs> because there's a, a theme of being able to change time, is any of this actually going to stick? Because, you know, we saw London be ruined in one of the shots, um, which I imagine they'll fix. Unless it's a future thing. Yeah. I don't want to look too closely because I don't want to like have spoilers. I like this shot a lot. That looks like the church on Ruby Road as well because so such a fun jump cut. Anyway, um, and then there was the shot of the Doctor screaming in the TARDIS out of the TARDIS window. Um, Part of me wants to go through this frame by frame. Part of me wants to just wait until May and enjoy it. Because there's only eight episodes. Like, that's so few. <laughs> but it'll still be fun, I'm sure. And 
yeah, Mrs. Flood. We didn't see her in the trailer, except for this shot here. But I am very curious to know what she's up to and who she actually is. I've seen all kinds of the usual fairy theories from it's Susan, it's River, it's the Rani. Um, basically any female Time Lord adjacent character has been suggested. I have no theories. Uh, I, I like I feel like the idea of her being related to Ruby is the most likely. Either she is Ruby, or she's Ruby's mother, or she has something to do with it. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, <coughs> I think that will do it for me. I've spent 12 minutes recording this two-minute video. Uh, Expanse video coming out tonight, as usual. And I'm looking forward to May, so come join me when the show starts coming out. Thank you guys for watching. You guys head off, grab a drink, get a snack, take a nap, go for a walk, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!